Hey everyone, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium, and I am here live with you. And tonight, we're going to talk about a really fun subject when it comes to the afterlife, and that is, what do souls wear in heaven? You know, this is the funniest thing, and to be honest with you, there's actually been a lot of controversy over what souls wear in the afterlife and how souls present themselves. You guys, I'm going to tell you this, I, I still can't get over this, I still can't get over this. The last time I talked about this on Facebook, it was actually right here on Facebook Live. And, you know, I was doing a live with you guys and people were asking me about how the souls come through and if the souls wear clothes. I was like, of course the souls wear clothes in the afterlife. You guys, there was this woman who was on here. I'll never forget it. She goes, Matt, I'm a psychic medium myself. She says, and you need to stop lying to people. You need to stop telling people that souls wear clothes in the afterlife. She's like, People in the afterlife are naked. Everybody's naked. All the souls that come through are naked. And I was like, what? Like, I was so flabbergasted, you guys. Because listen, I don't know what that lady was smoking, all right? But I'm going to tell you something. I laughed so hard because all I could think about in my head, right, was <laughs> all I could think about in my head was if all of a sudden I connected with one of your loved ones and I saw boobies dingling an ass. Like, I wouldn't know what to do. If I ever tuned, if I ever tapped into the spirit world and saw dingling you guys <laughs> i don't think i'd be able to do this job anymore <laughs> so that being said i am here to tell you exactly what i've learned about what souls look like in the afterlife what they wear in the afterlife and by the way when i said that, when i said that live when the lady came on facebook live and i said that souls wear clothes and she goes no they don't they're i'm a psychic medium they're naked all the souls come through naked and I burst out laughing and I'm like, what? I'm like, are you kidding me? You saw, you see dingling in your readings? That's it. She blocked me. She blocked me, never came back to my pitch. <laughs> and that was it. But I'm being truthful with y'all. I've never had someone come through naked. But we're going to talk about this because it definitely is a possibility. For example, for example, if your loved ones lived in a new, and I don't even know why we should have, why we, I'm starting with this. I, I should have picked a different way to come into this <laughs> an official uh uh mikiko is screaming laughing right now but the thing is is this <laughs> pentagon says a, a little too close and personal yes yes i don't know why we came in hot and heavy with this but i'm going to tell you this right now i have to backtrack just a little bit because if a soul was a nudist here in this world let's just say a soul was a nudist they lived in a nudist colony they loved being naked here in this world maybe, just maybe, that part wouldn't surprise me. It's never happened yet. But I'm sure if I read somebody who lived in a nudist colony here in this world when they were alive, chances are in the afterlife they're wearing their birthday suit. Just going to say, all right? So we're going to talk about it. I'm going to tell you guys exactly what the souls wear. I'll tell you that they do wear clothes unless, like it says, they were in a new, new <laughs> unless they were in a nudist colony or Maybe, I don't know. We're not going to get into it. Just, just going to say that they were close. But I want to tell you exactly what they look like, what they wear, how they dress, and how I see them. Because I think that when I start to describe this, I'm also going to describe your own loved ones and how you may have seen them in a dream or how you might remember them. So that's something that's really amazing. Um, and what I also want you to know is this. So, so I even think that's, think that's so funny. Listen, your loved ones do the, what they did here, right? So if you were a nudist, absolutely. On the other side, listen, this probably, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. But there might be a, a part of heaven where people do, I don't know. I haven't seen that part of heaven yet. I haven't died yet. I haven't died yet. But yet, here in this world, I haven't been to a, to a nude beach either. So I I don't know anything about that. I only know what the tents, what the tents show me. And I haven't seen that yet. But we're going to talk all about what the souls wear in the afterlife. But before I do, you guys, oh my God, this is crazy. Tomorrow, I'm heading back on tour. I am so excited. It's bittersweet. I'm going to miss my family. I'm going for literally two weeks. But tomorrow, I start off giving readings right in Lynn, Massachusetts. So if you can join me, there's still a few seats left. Tomorrow, I'll be giving readings in Lynn, Massachusetts at the Lynn Auditorium at 8 o'clock p.m. There's still a few seats left in the back, but it doesn't matter if you're sitting in the back or up on the balcony because if there's a message from your loved one, I'll get it to you no matter where you sit. I'm also coming this week to Welch, Minnesota. I'm coming to Waukegan, Illinois. I'm coming to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm also coming to Altoona, Iowa. And then when I come back, I'm coming to Stanford, Connecticut, Peekskill, New York, 
Baltimore, Maryland, Gary, Indiana, Ashland, Kentucky, Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, London, Ontario, Canada, Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, Keene, New Hampshire, Concord, New Hampshire, Snoqualmie, Washington, and I'm also going to be coming to Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, and Nova Scotia, Canada, and also Modesto, California, and Greensburg, Pennsylvania. All the dates are up on my website, meetmattfraser.com. So if you can come and see me this week in Massachusetts, Minnesota, Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, or you can come and see me in Stanford, Connecticut, or Peekskill, New York, or in Maryland. Where's everyone in Maryland? Everyone's out saying to me, come to Maryland, come to Maryland. I am coming. Tickets are up on my website, meetmattfraser.com. And there's also two online readings as well. So if you don't see your city, if you don't see your state up there, don't freak out. You can join me for a live online reading. There's two dates left, April 2nd and April 3rd. There's a few spots left. Just go to meetmattfraser.com to reserve your spot. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about it. What do the souls look like on the other side? So what I want you to know is that this is kind of weird to understand because in the afterlife, there's no Macy's, there's no Bloomingdale's, there's no Target, there's no, there's no Old Navy. But when I do readings, I see your loved ones all dressed up. For example, I love to see when souls come through and what they're dressed up in. And a lot of times you'll see that in a reading. When I'm doing a reading, it's very common for me to say, oh, your dad is all dressed up on the other side. He has a suit on, for example, I'll never forget. I was reading for this woman. She was so cute. She lost her husband. And they had been married for many, many years. And when I connected with her, I saw her husband in heaven. And he was all dressed up in this beautiful, beautiful brown suit with this brown hat. And I said to her, I said, oh, my God. I said, I see your husband. He's in this brown suit and this brown hat. And she had a smile that went from ear to ear. She got all excited. She says, Matt, that was his date night suit. Every week, she says, when he would take me to dinner, he would wear that brown suit. She goes, and he would go and he'd open the door for me. She says that he would always get me flowers and we'd go every week. And her face was gleaming the minute that I told her her husband was dressed up in that suit. Because the same way that he used to dress up, you know, here in this world in that brown suit to take her out on dates. Here he was dressed up in a reading showing her, showing her, oh my God, you know, I'm there with you. And oh my God, see Fargo says, Matt, is there Burberry? <laughs> She's looking at my, at my, uh, at my Jack, is there Burberry on the other side? No, there's not. And by the way, I knew somebody was going to comment on that because my mother, my mother-in-law got me this for, uh, for Christmas. Shout out to my, my mother-in-law, Sharon, who you know from the reality TV show. She bought me this for, for Christmas. And this is my rainy day outfit. This was, <laughs> this is what I brought Royce the Chuck E. Cheese in tonight. I had to, I had to stay flossing. Um, but anyway, this woman was so amazed when her husband and spirit came through and, you know, was in that brown suit because immediately she thought of the good times. She thought about the times when they used to go on date night with one another. And what I can also say is this, and this is a really good question. Rebecca is asking an awesome question. She goes, do souls wear what they wore in their coffin? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Depends on what it was. So Rebecca, if you buried your mom in her favorite outfit here in this world, chances are they'll be wearing it in heaven in, in, in the afterlife. But sometimes it's the opposite. Like I'll, I remember there was this man that I was connecting with, this, this father that had passed away. And all he wore here in this world was a white t-shirt and jeans. He wore white tee jeans. That's what he wore every single day. And when his family was laying him to rest, they thought they were doing a good thing. They were like, you know, we're going to get dad all dressed up. Like he can't leave this world in t-shirt and in jeans. So they went to the store, they bought him an outfit, they got him all dapper and dressed up. And then when I connected with him on the other side, guess what? I, they're like, the first thing that they asked me is, what's my dad wearing? And I said, he's wearing a t-shirt and jeans. And they were like, oh my God. They're like, we thought he'd be in the suit. We bought him the suit before he died. I'm like, no, your father's telling me that wasn't his style. He wouldn't have been caught dead in that, but yeah, he was because you buried them, buried them in it. And they were like, oh my God, oh my God. They're like, he, my dad never bought a suit in his life. They're like, we thought we were going to do something, something, you know, nice for him. But, you know, the father was okay just being in, uh, in, a white, in a white shirt and jeans. And Sarah Lee says, Matt, do they change clothes? Yes, they definitely can change clothes. And Christine says, Matt, I love how real you are. Listen, just being what my mother taught me. My mother taught me, treat you all like family. So I treat you like, you're, like I'm at the dinner table with you. But the thing was, is this, right? Is that 
souls on the other side can change what they're wearing, and especially about who comes through. So, for example, that woman that I was talking to when I was connecting with her husband, he showed me that he was wearing this beautiful brown suit. Well, chances are, if I was talking to his daughter, right, who is here in this world, he might show me that he was in a different outfit because it all depends on your loved ones want to look the best for you, right? So the same way that you dress up for certain people here in this world, right? You don't see me the same way that I get dressed up for Alexa, right? When I'm not in my when I'm not in my Burberry sweatsuit, by the way, you know, I'm at home and uh, I don't even know what the hell. I'm probably just boxes and a t-shirt, to be honest with you, right? So the thing is, is that souls when they got no, not nudists, by the way. I, we don't live in it. I don't. My house is not a nudist colony. For those of you who are here earlier in the in the live when we were talking about that. But what I can tell you is this, is that on the other side, your loved ones, you choose to wear what made them feel good. There was this mother I was connecting with. And when she it was actually funny, actually, I just did this reading for some of you guys who came. There was this woman that I just read for. She had died. Her, her um, well, her mother had died. Her mother was in spirit. She was in the audience. I'm actually going to be posting this video on my YouTube page. It was the most amazing reading. This woman, you guys, when I was connecting with her soul, she was like Jackie O. She had the best style here in this world. She showed me when she was alive, she used to have the scarves and be dressed up so nice. And she would always have different perfumes on. And she looked like she was straight out of Vogue when I was connecting with her. And it's funny because when I was connecting with her soul and she was showing me in heaven, she showed me her all dressed up and all these things. And then I was asking her questions, like, because in my head, I'll ask your loved ones questions. And I was saying to her, you know, show me what happened the night that you died. Show me, show me some of the things that happened before you passed away. You know, show me some intimate moments so I can share uh, this with your daughter. And you know what the woman said to me? She goes, I don't allow, I won't allow anyone to see me like that. She told me during the reading, I'm not allowing you to see me in the, in, in the hospital bed. She goes, I'm not allowing you to see me without makeup on. I don't want you to see me how I was. It's just like, tell me all these things. So I said to the, I, I just started laughing on stage and I told the daughter, I'm like, you're not going to believe this. I'm like, but your mother's telling me that she was like big into style, big into fashion, all these things. I'm like, and I'm asking her to show me the day that she died to give you validation. And she's telling me that she will not show you that, that show me that she won't show me. She will not let me see her without makeup. And the woman was like, that's my mother. That's my mother. She's like, oh my God, my mom was just like that. She's like, she worked for Avon. She was big into makeup and jewelry and this and that. She's like, and nobody was allowed to see her. But what's so beautiful about the other side is this, is that it's not about just what your loved ones are wearing, but also how your loved ones wear their hair, the jewelry that your loved ones have on, right? So the term you can't take it with you is true, right? There's no such thing as gold, you know, and bling. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do on the other side because I'm Italian. As you can see, I always got the gold hanging, right? Because I'm Italian. I give the best jewelry, right? Get the best jewelry, you know, because you know us Italians, we take them off of dead people. But... <laughs> Don't tell anyone I said that. But anyway, that being said, what I can tell you is this, is that there's no clothing store on the other side, but you're going to remember that clothing isn't about the brand name. It's a reflection of you. It's a reflection of who you are. So your loved ones aren't wearing jewelry on the other side to be flashy, but they do wear jewelry on the other side because it represents something. So for example, it's very common for me to see a husband and a wife that had passed away in heaven still wearing their wedding bands. And even though their wedding bands were left here in this world, they'll show me in heaven, they're wearing almost like a, a replica of that wedding band. It's the, same rep, rep, it's the same wedding band, it's just in spirit form, right? And it's their way of showing their commitment to one another on the other side. The same way a woman was just, I actually, I think the reading's already posted on my YouTube page. There was a woman that I connected with. And this is a good question that Gretchen's asking. She goes, well, what if you're cremated? So it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter if you're cremated, if you're buried. It doesn't matter how you're laid to rest. If you're laid to rest to see, it doesn't matter. You know, the souls, the, your body is your body. Your body stays here. However, whatever you do, whether you bury it, burn it, whatever happens, that does not affect your soul. But what I'll tell you is this, is that what's really cool about the afterlife is that your body, the way that you look, the way that you wear your hair, the way that you wear your makeup, everything is a true reflection of you. It's a reflection of your soul. Some people like dark colors. Some people like bright colors. Some people like that that fashion icon that just died. I think she was like 100 years old. I forget the name. It was just, it just came up all over TikTok and everything. She had the big glasses on and the big loofahs she used to wear and all that there. I think her name was Ira, Iris. I don't know. I don't want to say it because I'm going to butcher the name. But anyway. Long story short, what I want you to know is that 
uh, style is a reflection of you. So for example, when I connect with the other side, there was a man that I was just talking to. His mother was like completely in awe because when I was connecting with her son that had died, he came through and he was all tatted up. I saw he had tattoos all over his body. And the mother immediately started crying and she was like, oh my God, Matt, that's my son. Yeah, she's like, he was a tattoo artist. That's what he did. And he used to tattoo himself all over it. Him and his friends or colleagues used to you know, tattoo one another. I didn't think that he would have tattoos in heaven. Well, the truth is, is that even though the tattoos were left on his physical body, right, his soul on the other side still wears those tattoos proudly because it was the reflection of him. He was an artist. He made every tattoo. Now, if it could be the opposite. Let's say that your dad had a tattoo that he always covered up here in this world because he was ashamed of it. Maybe he got it at a college party. Maybe he got it at, you know, who knows where he got the tattoo. Let's just leave it at that, right? Let's say he was very ashamed of that here in this world. Well, in the afterlife, he might be without the tattoo because it wasn't a true reflection of him. It was a, it reflected a stupid decision that he made when he was alive here on earth. Does that make sense? So that's one of the things that, you know, comes up many times with the spirit world, many times over, is that on the other side, how do you view you? Do you view yourself with the tattoos? Do you view yourself without the tattoo? For example, this father I was connecting with, it was that same story. He had this, this, he was actually in prison. He had a tattoo that he had, that, you know, was done in prison. He was very ashamed of it since he got out of prison. He cleaned up his life, changed who he was. And he was always afraid of that tattoo. He would do everything that he could to wear long sleeve shirts so that no one could see this tattoo because he was ashamed of that part of his life. And once he got to the other side, the first thing that he showed his daughter was, look, I don't have the tattoo anymore. Because he wanted to show her that that part of his life, that chapter of his life that he was so ashamed of was past him. So that's one of the things that I want you to know. So what I can tell you is, is that, you know, uh, when you connect with the other side, it's based on your, on your personality and how you live life. Some souls come through with just sweatpants on, slides, and a, and a t-shirt or a hoodie, right? Others come through all dressed up. There was this one man I was connected with and he was in a band. And when he came through, he was all dressed up on the other side, you know, like he was going to perform. So it all depends on that soul. And it all depends on, you know, the version of themselves that you remember as well. So if you ever want to know what your loved one looks like, dreams are the most important way. Because dreams will show you what your loved one's soul looks like on the other side. What's so beautiful about dreaming is that when you dream of a loved one, you just go there. You just go there. You go and you visit them in an energy space. And Barbie from Instagram is asking a good question. She says, can other souls see each other? That's such a great question. Yes, they can. Souls can see one another just like me and you do. So this is the craziest thing about heaven. When we see souls as humans with our naked eyes, right? We can't see souls the way that, the, the way that they can see one another. So it's hard to understand. Like people are often think, that your loved ones don't have an appearance or that your loved ones are just here because they think, because a lot of times when we see souls, like for example, if you've seen orbs appear in pictures, if you've seen distortions appear in pictures and I tell you that's your loved one, you're like, wait a minute, how could a, an orb in a picture be my loved one? That looks nothing like my dad. That looks nothing like my, my father. That's just a circle. Well, it's not what your loved ones see in heaven. Your loved ones are able to see each other like we see right now. They're able to hug each other, to love one another, to kiss one another, to touch one another, right? Because in heaven, they're both in the same world. So they can see each other as clear as day. They can see just like you can see every hair on my face, right? Your loved one in spirit can see that same thing in the spirit world. And they can see into our world. They can see into our world really clearly more so than we can even see, because your loved ones can see what you're doing right now, what you're going to be doing five years in the future, 10 years into the future. The one thing that really sucks is that we can't see into their world with our own eyes. The only way that we can see spirit is, is that sometimes we might see blurs or orbs or distortion in pictures. Sometimes you might see your loved ones in a dream. That's the closest of what you'll see to them. And then sometimes what you'll see is you might see someone walk by you really quickly or a strange shadow that goes by really fast. That is you seeing spirit. But like I said, your eyes can't see spirits like they can see one another in heaven. 
So that's the most interesting thing about the other side and the afterlife and is that souls can see each other really clearly, but it's hard for us. But you know who else can see souls really clearly? It's young children because they're new souls born here in this world. So, you know, children be, be between the ages of, you know, uh, one and three can see spirit. And also pets can see spirit as well. So your cat, your dog can see their old owners. But what I also want you to know is this, is that remember how I was talking about you know, what you wear is a reflection of you. It also depends on, you know, what your hobbies were here in this world as well. If, for example, there was this man who I was waiting for, and he was this big biker dude here in this world. So when I was connected with him, he came through with the Harley Davidson jacket on. He showed me that, you know, uh, that he had the leather pants on, the full get up, the white t-shirt underneath with the big glasses and all of that, because that was him. That was his persona, right? It wasn't about showing off the Harley Davidson. It was about when he came through to me, he showed me Harley Davidson because he wanted the people that I was reading for to know it was truly him. He wrote a Harley, Harley, Harley Davidson. He repped the brands when he was here in this world. You know, that's who he was. And it's really cool, you guys, where sometimes souls will be super specific like that. Like, for example, there was this woman I was reading for. Her fiance had passed away. And when her fiance came through to me during the reading, he was wearing a Budweiser shirt with a big beer uh, beer bottle on it with the logo that said Budweiser. And I said, you're never going to believe this. I'm like, he's here and he showed me he's got this Budweiser t-shirt on, but he's got the beer bottle and it's describing it. And she was like, oh my God, t-shirt. I have that t-shirt. That was his favorite shirt. You know, why your loved ones show you that isn't because they're repping Budweiser on the other side, right? No one's paying them. It's not a paid advertisement in the spirit world. But he knew by saying that it'd be the validation that his fiance needed to know that it was really him. So sometimes souls come through with those super specific details. And oh my God, thank you, Angie. Angie says, you're amazing. Well, I gotta tell you, Angie, I'm not amazing. I just tell you what the other side show, show me. And they make my job really easy, especially when souls communicate really super clear. So like I said, you know, the thing is, is that not only is it a reflection with fashion, but also things happen when we get sick right? For example, there was this woman I was connecting with. And when I spoke to her, you know, here in this world, she had lost her hair. She had cancer and it went right through her body. She lost her hair here in the physical world. And when she was here, she had this beautiful, beautiful, bright red hair. And then when I was connected with her in spirit, guess what? She had this beautiful flowing red hair showing her family that she was completely okay. There was also a reading that I did where I was connecting with, you know, a man who here in this world had a really tough, time, I forget that what, what, what exactly the, um, uh, it's called, what exactly the syndrome was, but he was dealing with some type of a mental illness. I don't know if it was bipolar or schizophrenia, but whatever it was, this poor man, it had gotten so bad that he really lost his identity. He became homeless. He was wearing baggy clothes. He was just, the past five years of his life was terrible. You know, it started off as a, as a mental illness, turned into addiction. He was homeless. He had passed away. And when he came through to me from the other side, his family was shocked to see that he was back together. His hair was no longer long like it was before he died. He was cleaned up. He was back in, in, you know, in normal clothes. And it was amazing because that glimpse during that reading that he showed me that I conveyed to them showed them that he was completely fine. And that's why your loved ones come through. That's why your loved ones come through wearing the things that they wore and you know, show you the clothing and the outfits that they have because they want you to know that they're fine. And there's one other thing I got to tell you as well, which is so beautiful because I know that some of you may have done this and you've wondered about this. There was this man who had come through and when I was connecting with him, his daughter placed a necklace around his neck before he had passed away. She put this little medal that was on and it, had, it was inscribed about him and his connection with his daughter. And she had the other half of the necklace. It was like a, a necklace that went together. He had one half. She had the other half. She lived to rest with it. And when he came through on the other side, the first thing that he said to me is, Matt, talk about my necklace. My daughter has the other piece. And I said, he's telling me about a piece of, of the necklace. And she goes to me, oh my God, Matt. And she pulled it out. She goes, this is the other piece. I, my dad has the other piece. I buried him with it. And he was showing her in heaven that he did get that piece. She put it on him, you know, in the funeral home. And, you know, next thing you know, he was showing up in the, in the, in the reading with that piece around his neck, showing her that, you know, he received it on the other side. And as many times as she wears that necklace to feel close with him, 
he's also got that necklace in heaven, letting her know that she can always feel close by wearing it. This is what's so beautiful about your loved ones. Your loved ones in spirit love to come through and validate all the things that you did for them and the things that you've done after their passing. The one thing that I always love during readings is souls love to come through and tell you about the things that they did after, after they had died. So for example, you may have got married after your dad passed and he comes through and talks about your wedding. You may have had a child after your mom's passing and she comes through to talk about, about you know that baby that you had and about your pregnancy. It's because your loved ones want you to know that they are not missing from your life and they're just as close to you now as they were here in this world. And they come through with their outfits and the clothing and how they, how they style themselves to prove to you that they're no longer sick, that they're the same person, and that more importantly, you don't have to worry about them. So many times, the last moments of our loved ones passing are terrible ones. We see them being sick. We see them not being themselves. We see their physical you know, attributes change because of illness. And what I love so much about doing a reading is that every time I do, your loved ones show me the best versions of themselves. And I think everybody, everybody leaves a reading and says, oh my God, my mom is okay. And if you know that and you feel that with your heart, then you can be okay as well. So that being said, I'm really excited because if you guys want a reading from me, I want to tell you where you can come and meet me in person. So this week I'm back on tour and I'm coming to give you guys readings in these cities and states. So in all these cities and states, I'm going to be coming to give live readings up close and personal. Lynn, Massachusetts is tomorrow. I'll be giving readings at the Lynn Auditorium tomorrow night at 8 o'clock p.m. There's a few seats left. Then I'm heading to Welch, Minnesota, to the Treasure, Treasure Island Casino. I'm also coming to Waukegan, Illinois. I'll be at the uh, Janice Theater. I'm also coming to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'll be at the Riverside Theater on March 16th. Then I'm coming to Altoona, Iowa on March 17th to the Prairie Meadows Casino. And I'm also coming to Stanford, Connecticut on April 4th. Peekskill, New York, you guys, we're almost sold out of that event. So if you want to join me at Peekskill, it's up there. Baltimore, Maryland, I'll be at the Lyric um, on April 6th. Gary, Indiana, I'll be at the Hard Rock Casino. I'm also coming to Ashland, Kentucky, where I'll be giving readings at the Paramount Art Center. I'm coming to Ben Salem, Pennsylvania on April 20th. I'm also coming to Greensburg, Pennsylvania. That's up there as well. London, Ontario, Canada, I'll be there on May 1st. Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, May 2nd. Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, I'll be there on May 7th. That's almost sold out, you guys. If you can meet me in Winnipeg, Winnipeg's almost sold out. I'm also coming to Keene, New Hampshire, Concord, New Hampshire, Snoqualmie, Washington, and a few other places, just go to my website, meetmattfraser.com. But if for some reason, if your city or your state or your country is not listed, I want you to know that there's another way to get a reading with me. All the readings that you've seen me do right here in this office, those are not private readings. Those are online group readings, and you can attend with me. Just go to meetmattfraser.com. The next date is April 2nd. So April 2nd, there's a few spots left. I'm going to be doing live readings right here in this office. If you want to join me, make sure you go to meetmattfraser.com, meetmattfraser.com, and click on online readings. And also what I want you to know, on March 22nd, calling all psychic mediums. For all of you who are intuitive, psychic, feel you connect with the other side, I know you do. Me and my mom, because my mom is also a psychic medium, she's who I got the gift from. Me and my mom are coming together to do a live class about connecting with the spirit world. And we're going to be teaching you the signs that your loved ones are sending you because signs are a hidden language. There's so many ways your loved ones send you signs. It's not just within life. Your loved ones are sending you signs through your dreams. Your loved ones are sending you signs through your psychic ability. And there's specific signs. There's signs from your loved ones in spirit. There's signs from your pets. And there's also life signs from your soul and from your spirit guides. So if you want to know more about signs, me and my mom are going to be teaching this whole class. And then we're going to be doing questions and answers, taking your questions and answers. And then we're going to be doing live readings. So if you want to join us, that's also on my website, meetmattfraser.com. Just click on online readings. So a lot to look forward to. So excited about it. And what I also want you to know, one last thing before I go, is that if you haven't heard, I have a new book that's coming out. It's coming out this summer. You can pre-order it right now. Pre-orders have already started. It's called Don't Wait Till You're Dead, Spirit's Advice from the Afterlife. So if you've ever wondered what your mom or your dad or your sister or your brother could say, if they could have five minutes with you from the afterlife, if they could come back and tell you what the afterlife is really like, Don't Wait Till You're Dead. This is my newest book. It's coming out this summer. 
But like I said, pre-order it right now because I only have a limited amount of hardcover copies and I want to make sure that you get it. And I want to thank all of you guys for being here. I see Gertie is here with me. Thank you so much for wishing me safe travels. Carol is here in Canada. I hope that you come and see me when I'm in Canada. I also see that Jen is coming to see me in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I love that. I see Jess is here in New Zealand. Robin says, I wish I could meet you. You definitely can. Don't forget online or in person. And I also see that Marie is here as well. And I see all you guys here on, uh, on Instagram as well. Thank you guys for being a part of this. I love coming on and talking to you guys live and sharing with you all that I've learned about the afterlife. Because the more that we share these experiences, the more that we all learn a little bit more about what the afterlife is truly like and how your loved ones are with you every day. So trust in the signs, trust in what you're sensing and feeling. And remember, there is no such thing as death. Your loved ones are always with you. So talk to them tonight. I promise you that they hear you. And until next time, I'll see you soon. I hope to see you live on tour or at the next online reading. If you want to join me, go to meetmattfraser.com because if the dead can find me, so can you. So I will see you then. In the meantime, trust in the science.